Does anyone know what this is though? Tell me in the comment section below. Hi and welcome to Aiken Adventures. Where we're taking you to do all the best things in all the best places all around Florida. And today we're taking you to the historic Stranahan House Museum. We greatly appreciate the historic Stranahan House Museum hosting us today and our tour guide today is going to be Jonathan. Hi everybody, how are we all doing? The house that you see behind me is the oldest standing structure not only in the city of Fort Lauderdale but in all of Broward County. It was built back in 1901, so 120 years ago now. This place is really so picturesque because it's it's planted like right here in the middle of these mangroves. The house only had one family to ever live inside of it, and that was Frank and Ivy Stranahan. Uh, they did not have children of their own, but they are considered the founding father and mother of Fort Lauderdale, so we always like to say that the city was their child. Right behind me is a miniature replica of the first building that was here. It's a miniature post office and a miniature store. Now, Frank came to Fort Lauderdale in 1893, but back then there was no city of Fort Lauderdale. Instead, Fort Lauderdale was just a ferry boat station to get people across the New River. The only thing they have remaining from the ferry boat is this bell. Let's see how Vivian does. Oh no! The hook flew off. <laughs> it's actually a lot heavier than it, than it looks. Now, when you come with your child or with like your school group or your homeschool group, they like to try to do some hands-on things with your children. And one of the things that they've added to the tour is that they do a butter making activity. So we're gonna try that with Vivian. She's three years old, so we'll see how this works with a three-year-old. So first things first, all you need is heavy whipped cream. You can get this at any supermarket in America. But I tell you, even though this is a quicker way of making butter, it's kind of a workout to be honest. So I might need some of your guys' help. What do you say, Vivian? You wanna shake it? All right. Be gentle, don't drop it. Yep, just give it a good old shake. There we go. At least I didn't have to get out the butter tray. <laughs> yeah. We, we tried the butter tray. It, take, it does take a while. Yeah. Right? It does the trick. I'll, I'll, I'll dump out the excess material. It looks kind of funky, but it's butter. When we do it with groups, we all eat this at the same time. All right, guys. Hey, Vivian, you want to taste one? Mmm, it's tasty. I've never made my own butter before. Jonathan says that he does it at home all the time. It is, yeah. <laughs> add a bit of salt to it, and maybe even a little bit of cinnamon. Very good homemade butter. We just made butter, we just rang the historic bell, but now it's time to go inside the house itself. Now, the house that you see today has been restored to its 1915 appearance. So even though the house was built in 1901, the house has gone through many different changes. So as we go through the rooms and I show you the artifacts, I'm gonna tell you the story, not only about the house, but more importantly about the Stranahan's. Follow me. So because of all of the water traffic, they used to orient their houses toward the river and the river basically served as main street of Fort Lauderdale. So this over here is Frank Stranahan's portable typewriter. So it was like his laptop of his day. <laughs> to Ivy. She was born Ivy Julia Cromartie in 1881 in North Florida. So she's a true Floridian. She was, Ivy, when she turns 18 in 1899, she wants to be a school teacher like her father was. And she applied for the Fort Lauderdale school teacher job. And well, she got the job. So she became the very first school teacher here in Fort Lauderdale. So Ivy was a very key figure in Fort Lauderdale history. She actually spent time educating the Seminoles, even though there was a lot of skepticism on the part of the Seminoles toward white people, they were very accepting of Ivy. She also founded a number of local chapters of various charity organizations and was very active politically. 
the piano's quite a bit out of tune right now, but they always tune it right before the holiday season because they do a lot of Christmas tours and somebody comes in and plays the piano. This is a Victrola and he showed us what would be like the predecessor of like a cassette tape <laughs> or a CD. <laughs> So Frank and Ivy were actually pretty wealthy and that's the reason they were able to afford things like electricity and fine china. An interesting fact about Ivy is that she did not drink caffeine, which was interesting to me because there's a beautiful tea set on the table. So I did ask about that. Turns out she did drink hot chocolate. So instead of salt shakers, they used this tiny little bowl and tiny little spoon to put their salt in. He was one of the first city commissioners and he also started the first bank. Vivian's gonna help open the first bank. You ready? Okay. Oh, very good. Oh, wow, you can do it. What's in there? Is it heavy? Yeah, Frank had to do a lot of different things. So this right here is their toaster. Check that out. Right over here is the ice box. Ice would melt after a few days into the drip pan. And right over here is the wash tub with the ringer for the clothes. Here's the stove. So right off of the kitchen was the breakfast nook. Now it's time to do Vivian's favorite thing. We're heading upstairs. The first room is the sewing room. This is Ivy's sewing machine, and it's powered with foot power, like, you know, the Flintstones or something. <laughs> Next up, we're heading into the guest room. When Frank Stranahan passed away, Ivy converted this house to a bed and breakfast to continue to receive some income. And this would have been the room where the guests would have stayed. One aspect about frontier life was there was no air conditioning and there was no heaters. One of those rare cold days, you want your bed nice and toasty. And this is where this thing comes in. This is called a bed warmer. You would put warm coals in here. You would usually cook the coals maybe in your fireplace uh, or from a fire outside. And then you would bring it into your bed and you would warm up the covers. Make the bed nice and toasty. Basin for washing your face, kind of like using a sink in your bedroom. Right here is a dollhouse replica of the Stranahan house. Right over here is the upstairs bathroom. And right over here, upstairs, is the master bedroom. It kind of remains in the state that it was after Frank Stranahan passed away and Ivy converted it to a room just for herself. And right out the door of the master bedroom is the balcony. The wicker furniture on the balcony is the only furniture that you're allowed to sit on. So you can sit up here, relax, and enjoy it. There are wonderful views of Fort Lauderdale, and while they aren't the same as when the Stanahans lived here, uh, the location is the same, and you can just imagine what it must have been like before all of this was developed. And the final stop on the tour is the gift shop just like every good museum. Thank you so much for giving us the tour today. And you guys be sure to stop by the Stranahan House during your next visit in Fort Lauderdale. Have a great day.